friends, welcome to an updated version of the of our video walkthrough. We are going to check out the digital household booklet expense tracking template made in Google Sheets for 2021. I added some things and I'm going to show them to you. First of all, we have a start here template. Uh, it's just a tab with instructions in writing. If you prefer to follow along in writing, we have steps summed up right here. That's, that's already it. But in this video, I'm just going to show you what we need to do to get started. So first of all, I'm, I want to adapt this, this tab, the non-fixed categories, and just to give you an idea of where we will see these categories. They're going to show up on the overview template underneath non-fixed categories. So whatever you write inside this tab will show up here. And in the monthly uh, tracking templates inside the drop downs. So let's start here. You can use what I already have if you like to uh, if you like to track your expenses and categorize them like this. If not, you can select and delete everything and start from from scratch. Dining out gifts books, random, miscellaneous, completely up to you. Now, if we go back to, if we go to the overview, the overview tab, we will see that the changes we made automatically appear in this area, thanks to an array formula, which immediately, it, com it copies everything from non-fixed categories tab in range B3 to B22. And in each of the templates, in all the drop downs, we see that the new categories are already showing up. So that's the second tab done. We don't need to look at it anymore. We continue with the overview. We go all the way to the top. And here we want to write our different kinds of incomes. Maybe you only have one main source of income. What you then do is inside B2, you write however much that is. And we see that this, is, um, uh, this value you put here is automatically copied in all the other tabs for the month. Now, if, you're, if maybe you got a bonus in January or February, whatever, then you could, you could just add it to your salary. So we have B2, it takes B2 plus, maybe you got a 500 euro or dollar bonus. Maybe we got another bonus of 400 in March. And maybe this month we received less, we only got 1000, who knows. Then we can just completely overwrite, overwrite this field. You do the same with, uh, in, with all these fields. Maybe you are earning on Etsy. And this is always, now Etsy is probably not fixed. So let's take something else. Client one. And client one pays you 1K. Now if we put, values we put in these fields in B2 to B5 are automatically copied in the rest of the monthly tabs. And if needed, you can always just overwrite these individual fields. So don't worry about that. At the end of the row, it's a little out of sight, but right here, we see the total amount of salary and money from client one right here. And this is your grand total of income. Let me put this back a little. Right. So let's put client two here as well. Client two is giving us 500. Let's stick, uh, let's keep it like that for now. Then we move on to summing up our fixed monthly expenses. What I want you to do is, this is just dummy data. You can remove it or keep it here as an example, but let's remove it for now. And every single fixed monthly expense you have, such as rent, heating, water, 
internet, phone bill, oops, phone bills, car payment. You just put in column A inside here. And the fixed amount here, you can just override all these values as well. So let me select everything, press backspace, and we start from scratch. Rent is, who knows, $800 or euros. For heating, you pay 50. Water, 30. Internet, 35. Phone bills, 30. Or maybe you make a lot of phone calls, so it's 80. Car payments, 300. And so on. So those, now we have finished setting up the, the income and the fixed expenses sections. Let's continue with the non-fixed section. There's only two things we need to touch here. Why? Because when we track our expenses, we're going to choose a category. We're going to categorize by food or by groceries or by dining out or gifts. And in each, uh, each column here, takes, it sums up all the values that come from this tab and that are uh, categorized by this category. So here you have the formula. It sums everything in tab January 21 in this range. And it looks at this value. To keep it simple, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything in this section except for the little bit underneath budget. This is the only thing you can touch. Um, who knows, budget 200. Well, 200, 100, 20, 30, 40, who knows. And as long as you never spend more than your budget, this will always stay green. Once it hits zero, or once you start spending more, uh, let's put a 20 here. We have a budget of 20 for dining out, but let's see what happens when we start tracking expenses in January 21, and we spend more than $20 or euros on dining out. Now again, this, these three columns you can touch. And this is dummy data which I put here as an example, so you can just delete it. Okay, so we are, we like dining out. Uh, tacos, outside. And it cost 15 euros. But we were naughty. Instead of only going out for dinner for $20, we did it twice and we exceeded our budget. This time we spent $30 on tacos. And again, it's spent on dining out. We, if we now go back to the overview, we see that the difference between our budget and our actual spending is minus 25. So we went overboard and spent $25 more than what we budgeted for. And that's why it's now red. Now, for each month, you can do this um, as you go, like first for January and once we're in February, you can do the same and set a budget. That's the only thing you need to do only touch the budget column per month. Uh, then we have the savings section. Again, the only thing we want to touch here is the planned, uh, the planned field. So the whole middle column, except for here, don't touch that. The planned field you can touch. And as long as you spend less than you earn, you're gonna save money and this will stay this will stay green and it will say yes, you met your goal. Then oops, if we go back to the tracking tab, maybe it, it can happen that we need more rows for one for one day. What we then do is we click on the number of the row where we want to insert another one for that day. Right click, insert one below, and there we have. Okay, in reality, shops are probably going to be closed on this day, but let's pretend. We're going to spend 50 on groceries. Oh no, we need another, um, we need, we need another row because we spent more money. 
then we do the same. Right now I'm using a Mac shortcut, which is Control Option I, and then I press B, and we have another row. Maybe I was depressed and I bought some alcohol online. Um, hmm, yeah, this is actually the same, but just an example. That's how you insert new, new rows. And you can do that anywhere in this tracking template when you need it. Make sure that you have one value, one type of expense per row, so that it's easier to track. What else? I think that's pretty much it. Let me see. We have our incoming money and our total. Then we can see exactly how much per month we get. These will probably be the same for every single month. But here you can make a difference on how much you are actually spending and how much you should be spending by setting a budget for your for your categories. I think that's it. So good luck. I will link in the description the, the article which has links to the template and I hope this is useful to you and have fun tracking your expenses. Oh, I didn't even mention this. Here, for, for the fixed expenses, you might want to check your bank account, check any receipts you got from Spotify, from Upscribe, from whatever online service you're using that is billing you every month. So that's, I consider that a fixed expense, so I just put it in this column. And in case you would need more, if you, if you need more space for more expenses, you can click on the row, insert one below. You'll have to modify it a little. So here I copy paste, copy paste, so that still looks pretty. Uh, let me just check if, yeah, it is still tracking everything inside this column. So whenever you need more space, just select a few, uh, select a few rows, right click, and insert below or above, up to you. That's it. Good luck.